going, guys? So today what we're going to be talking about is a technique that I was able to find in this book, The Six Degrees of Social Influence. And so the first one, so the one that we're going to be talking about today, is that asking for help and uh, seeking help from others can actually work as a persuasion um, tool that we can use, right? If we need something, if something needs to be done, we can ask for help and it will happen, right? So there was a study. Let's, let's, let's talk through a couple of the points that he made in the book. Is that there was a study where they wanted to assess, right, how people said no face-to-face -face or something like that. And so what they did is then they would have approach random strangers on the street and ask for the nearest Starbucks or whatever. And it was always 15 minutes away. It was 15 minutes away from where they were. Okay. They'd all generally kind of point to where it was or they'd say, I don't know. I'm sorry. I wish I could help or something like that. But they'd try to be helpful. All of them or at least a majority of them except for the, um, you know, one or two. That's always, you know, like or whatever. But when they when they went to the next stage which so that one was a control and then the next stage when they were asking if they could walk them there and show them in person right so basically they'd approach somebody hey do you know where the nearest starbucks is uh yeah it's generally over there okay uh i was curious could you walk me there cuz i still i still i i'm still brand new to this blah, 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 blah. and guess what every other person like they originally thought that it would be 1 in 8 right one in eight people generally would say yes, but when they approached face to face and asked them to walk them there, which is a 15 minute walk, which is out of the way probably from where they're going, one out, like it was every other one said yeah, and they walked them down to the Starbucks. It was crazy. And so people do not like, here's the principle people do not like rejecting somebody face to face. It's easier to say no to a text or ghost somebody on a text or not even show up to something or it's uh, or, or say no via email and block or something like that. But when you're standing face to face, it's very it's a lot harder to do that. Right. So when you're asking for something, guess what? You're going to do it face to face if you want, you know, if, if that's a possibility or whatever. And another one is that how you could work this is that you could use Skype or some sort of video where they see your face. Probably works the same way. There's no studies on that. I never talked about that. But I'd probably say that it'd prob you'd probably get a better response rate if you ask people instead of over the phone or, or through email or something like that, that you did a Skype call with them, especially if you know them, because then that, that makes sense, right? So if you're asking some like close friends or family members or pe you know people that know you, uh, and you and you need help and you ask them with FaceTime, you might get a better result. Uh, the next one is that people always want to say that they're contrarians. OK, so let's let's look at this. So negative bias is associated with uh, asking for help. Like so when when we weigh um, the possibilities of when we ask for help, we always weigh the negative ones when we're rejected or somebody looks down on us, somebody judges us for asking for help. Um, we always have those kind of simulations running more than the positive ones of seeing stuff actually come through, actually working out. So when, when we're taking huge numbers of people and we ask them to think about uh, what are some of the emotions or feelings or, or things that you might associate with asking for help or some of the possibilities, some of the first ones that they'll name off and the most important ones that they actually feel that they'll actually give some emotional weight to is probably the negative ones. The negative ones. Okay? And so, if there's a negative association with asking for help, it's probably unpopular. Right? It's probably not very many people are like, I'm going to ask for help anyway. Yeah, I know there's this a negative emotion, but blah, blah, blah. But usually they don't do that. Usually the people are always trying to avoid that kind of pain or discomfort and move towards something that is more satisfying. Right? So it is unpopular to ask for help. And it might be undervalued because when you look at, you know, all the various, you know, when you look at Warren Buffett, right? 
usually what everybody else does and everybody else's behavior in regards to a specific topic is usually not necessarily the correct way to behave or to actually find real value, real um, opportunities, okay? Okay, um, there's also another study that I talked about is that we can use this is that it's not just this asking for help and then people are more likely, but the thing is, is that when we measure, when they measure the emotional payoff of somebody asking for help and somebody offering help is that when somebody asked somebody for help, the person who was asked actually experiences a higher positive emotion on average than the person, than if they were offered help, right? So if I offered you help or whatever, uh, you would feel a certain positive emotion. But if I asked for your help, you'd probably feel better, especially if it was like, you know, um, you know, I've been thinking about this for a long time and, you know, I know your skill set. I know what you like to do. And, you know, I'm thinking of this, you know, project and I, you were the first one I thought about. And so, man, you know, uh, you know, I, I wanted to ask you for help. You know, I, I, I think I need your help. Yeah, just just what you do and stuff, you know, perfectly fits what's what's going on. And I kind of got a plan and, you know, for all the pieces to come together, I think you're one of the key players that will help this unfold. I don't want to, you know, you know, impose there's something important, really important going on. But um, I'd really appreciate it if 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 uh, blah, blah, blah. And then you do whatever, you know. And then they say, yeah, sure, what is it? And then you give them the details. So watch watch this. So this is how you use this. Because then you're using, because um, you're all trying to use this congruently. Because uh, imagine if you have something, like, imagine, like, you don't have to worry about the negative feelings, right? So if you have a negative feeling and you're asking for somebody to help and you know that it's garbage, they can feel that. So they won't help you. You're safe, <laughs> right? So now if you feel strongly that this will actually do good for not just you and them, but them too, right? Well, then there'll be a positive emotion associated with it. And so when you're like, hey man, uh, you know, I, you know, I was, I was kind of working on some things in the, uh, like recently, and, uh, you know, I think, you know, man, I, I need, like, blah, 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 I can't even do it. I can't even do it. Man. <laughs> but I, I need your help. And then they say, yeah, sure, what do you need help with? So you you ask for their help first, then they say sure, and then you give them the details, right? So you don't give them the details first. You you ask them for help first because then it has that continuity of consistency, right? So there's also a principle in psychology um, where if you can get somebody to say yes, it's easier to get them to say yes again and again and again and again and again and again okay so you get them so what you do is that you work in baby steps right so uh, imagine how this would work uh, this would probably be like really subtle you, you won't even register this but imagine you're going to the coffee shop and you have somebody uh, that you want to influence you're carrying some stuff hey man could you <laughs> could you grab the door really quick and they say yeah sure awesome thanks man I really appreciate it and so we sit down you sit down, um, you do that stuff. Oh God, I left some stuff in my, <laughs> oh my gosh, I left some stuff in my car uh, for the presentation or whatever. Could you watch my stuff while I go get it? Sure, man. Cool. You come back. All right. <laughs> and then you ask them, hey, you know, I know I haven't seen you in, in a couple of months, but the way recent some things have been recently going on is that, man, I need your help. And you were the first person that came to mind. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I need your help, man. And they're like, uh, about what? <laughs> so you got yes at the door. Yes, watch my stuff. Yes, can you do me a favor? Yes, fill in the details. You already got four, four, um, four gates, quote, unquote, of consistency, of saying yes to favors, right? Favors of doing things. And guess what? If you uh, and then when you when you 
put in the they're special and that they're one of the first people or they um, they have a specific skill set that perfectly matches and just make sure like when you have enough friends when you have enough friends enough colleagues enough people uh, who have all these different skill sets and are competent in all their various things that they have you can actually say legitimately you are one of you are one of the people that has this particular skill set that can make the difference on this project. It's completely congruent. It's not manufactured. It's completely true because you call up the people that are going to help the most. Not to mention, they feel special, <laughs> which also increases that emotional hit. Then they also have that feeling like they're actually doing something meaningful for somebody else. And when you analyze uh, helping behavior and altruism, right, stuff like that, it gets into this emotional component where – it gets this extra physical, extra physical meaning, right? Where people love it. Like when they go home, they're like, oh my gosh, I just did that for a friend. That was amazing. And they're like, that was, that was incredible. Right? So what you do is that you ask, hey man, you know, I was working on some stuff. So you give them a reason. And I just wanted to ask you, uh, I'm going to ask a favor or something like that, or uh, I think I need your help. There you go. I think I need your help. And then they're like, yeah, sure. What do you need? There you go. So that's, that's the technique that I got from this book. I didn't think of that myself. I just stole it from this book. It's in the CU library. Um, it's kind of where the uh, psychoanalytic stuff is and where the memory, uh, intelligence, wisdom, genius – emotions like books on emotions books on kind of like the human psyche are all at and um so yeah there's treasure in the the university libraries and if you just dig through it you're going to get things that are better than any college course any high school course and you're going to have skills that are going to just be mind-blowing on how they're going to just revolutionize how you do things or 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 how to go about doing the things that you already do. Because this is just a, another tool, another something to express what you authentically are. And so if we have a tool of communicating what you are innately, it's, a, it's, another, it's another, just another color to paint with. And that's beautiful. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care now.